everybody. It is Tuesday in the evening and I have been so busy today. I'm actually making some beautiful candles and look at that gorgeous purpley colour. The light behind me actually shows the colour. Now I'm sorry that the lighting is probably not very perfect but I thought you might want to come along to see what I'm up to. I have lots of things everywhere at the moment as much as I try and keep everything neat. I have been super busy because today I have actually been talking to Marie from Humble Bee and me. Uh, we had our Zoom today with the lovely uh, Chrissy as well. Chrissy's company is um, Blossom Gum, so which is really lovely, isn't it? I love that name. It's so cute. Anyway, I will add Chrissy's links here as well as the lovely Marie's links as well. Now, Marie is coming to our conference, so that's why I had to, um, you know, do a few details today because Marie is actually flying from Canada in March. So it's, uh, you know, we've got to do all of these things and organize hotels and lots of fun stuff um, in between. So I'm really excited to see Marie as I know everyone else is. But today is it's about candles so let's get ready ready for these candles I've already done some and now this one here is my magnolia it smells really nice it's really light lots of you probably know by now I'm testing out a new wax as much as I love coconut soy and all of you know I love pure candle supplies and their wax I really do love it but unfortunately it's quite soft um, which I know that's just a part of that wax um, and also the problem with that wax is sometimes it doesn't hold up uh, in stores when they've got to sit in there for a long time so that's something that I was like a bit oh what do I do uh, but anyway I am trying this new one from Luxury Candle Supplies so we will see how it goes but let's do our first pour so that you can see how beautiful it's going to look so now you can see it's beautiful and purple and I do have my jars here. Um, I'm using these beautiful, um, you know, wick centering tools. These ones are from a company called Quick Wicks. Lots of people probably know these. They are really, really good. I absolutely love them. Um, really, really good. You know, if you want to make an investment to make your life easy, definitely grab some. Um, I've definitely made my life easy doing these. And these are 200 grams each. So I'm not going to fill them to the top because if I filled them to the top, it would be 225. Um, and usually I do measure it, but I have the tripod sitting on the measure at the moment. But I pretty much know. I mean, you can tell what's right and what's wrong. And in here I have a little extra anyway, just in case. So let me just add them in so then I know everyone's getting what they should be getting in these so they'll actually get more rather than less but these ones are looking beautiful these ones I've already done so this is my licorice rose so gorgeous this one you, I mean when I first thought of that scent I thought oh is it going to work but it really does because the deep um, red ruby rose which I got that um, scent from Pure Candle Supplies and then I've added a licorice into it it's just lovely um, this particular one here that I'm using is called Cotton Magnolia which is this one here and then I have something extra in it which that one is from Luxury Candles this one's from Pure Candles and then the one I've got at the end um this one at the end actually is half pure candles and half luxury um, candle supplies. Now, some of these cannot be used on the skin. So these two I'm using can't be on the skin, but they're absolutely perfect for candles. And one thing I will tell you is if you're using the particular M12 that I'm using the wax, that particular wax, it's super duper important um, that that wax just sits by itself for a while. After you make these, you definitely need them to sit um, to cure. So you can't really go and sell it straight away. Definitely not with this particular one. Um, but anyway, I just thought that's super important that we talk about that uh, because you know all waxes are different like if you use coconut soy straight away honestly within a day or two you can light that you know that it's, it's strong it's it's good these ones need time for the scent to um actually cure in them and i'm going to say that i think the scent throw the cold scent throw isn't as good as coconut soy but the hot um scent throw is probably better than coconut soy but it's not until you actually uh, you know burn it that you really smell that gorgeous smell so that's one thing I've noticed with the m12 and I do use that as well in my wax melts I've made some today um, these are my wax melts I've got to do those but I've um, 
I don't, I'm not going to do these tonight, I don't think, because I've already made quite a few on the other side. I'll take you over and show you in a minute. But we're not going to move these. I try not to move the candles if I can help it because we don't want to move anything um, because it will make it all wonky. And this um, particular wax dries beautiful. I mean, beautiful and smooth. You really shouldn't need to do anything. You know, the only thing is I've had one sinkhole all up, but pretty much none other than that. Uh, I think only one or two. And then my last beautiful one here is going to be the apricot tea. So let me organize the wax. We will do all of that and um, I'll show you exactly a little bit of my process because I do color some of these ones. So let's get the next bit organized. Now these are what these ones look like. Obviously these are drying and don't they look pretty? They have a tiny bit of colour. I'm actually using uh, a powdered dye. This comes from the UK but I actually get it from a company called Sud Off in Australia. I will actually link the colours down below. So the one in the middle you can see that looks brownie. That's actually a pink. It will dry a really light pink. The purpley one should go quite a lot lighter and honestly you need just the end of a paintbrush brush dipped in it's literally a grain they are super strong they will last you for years these powdered dyes they honestly will so anyway these ones are done don't the new jars look a bit gorgeous I really really love them um, and as I said these are the the um, wick tools I'm using are quick wicks they are super good you can get them in this pinky color of course I love pink so I chose the pink tops and get them in a white um, as well and I think maybe a bone I can't remember uh, but anyway you can get them in those you can buy them in groups of six or fifties there's quite a lot um, and they're pretty cheap like honestly they're not that expensive uh, I thought they were a bit of a bargain to be really honest I'll also put the links down below for those ones um, and there's lots of different sizes but these ones definitely fit uh, my tulip molds so these particular tulip molds I actually make the um, jar myself I make this out of hydrostone and I got the original mold from Lee molds in Australia so Lee molds actually have quite a few um, candle making molds so you can go over there I'll put all the links below uh, for them as well so that you can um, go over there and see what they're up to but now let's get on to making our last one and um, we'll make it gorgeous and then I'm going to leave these over overnight and just come back in the morning to um, undo them so now on my scale here you can see that I definitely you know obviously do have my container I'm using the same one it's okay to use the same one as long as your scents aren't too strong in between and then I've actually already uh, torn out my scale this is my big scale that it's sitting on here and you know you can see the wax to the side here wax is a messy business now with mine what I actually do is I use eight percent fragrance load with this wax some waxes you're going to use eight nine when I did coconut soy I always used 9% but this one doesn't take as much fragrance load as um, coconut soy it's a little bit different um, it is a soy based and it does have um, a I think it has like a 3% additive in it um, which some of them do if you need one to sit on the shelf in shops that's definitely the way to go um, like everyone I started with totally natural soy but you know a natural product you know it's beautiful and it's natural but the problem is it just doesn't hold up as good as some of the other ones with a, a slight additive in so I guess you've got to ask yourself if you're happy to use the um, additive but anyway let's just go and pop our wax in um, I don't have a fancy melter I tell people this all the time like honestly I don't I mean you can see I'm just literally using this cup and then I basically just take it out of the wax and usually I would be doing this super fast but I'm going over the top of the mic um, because you know you don't want me hitting the mic and then um, it's all noisy so I try super hard not to hit it and hopefully my voice is still uh, super good as we're talking along but anyway let me just fill this one up all right so we have done all of that now when I do this uh, the easiest way to figure out your measurements I mean there's all different calculations honestly I'm going to be honest I just do it simple I mean in here I want to get 400 grams um, of the particular you know candle wax that's with the fragrance added so literally I'm going to you know I know that I want 8% fragrance load so I'm going to times 8 by 4 and that gives me amount uh, that I actually need to put in that so I want to have 32 grams uh, 
you know of my fragrance and then the rest is going to be wax it's as simple as I do this uh, you know it's nothing really fancy about it you don't need to add in you know your colors or anything into your mix because honestly that it's going to be a grain you won't even be able to measure that even if you tried uh, and then obviously once this gets to the right temperature which it is now anyway it's 64 and you can add in this particular one you can add the fragrance in around you know your 60 55 60 64 it doesn't really matter I've actually found that there's not really much of a difference I mean if it was 70 degrees Celsius I would not be adding in fragrance to that because it's too hot but generally honestly um you know you don't need to sort of worry about that too much with this one it's a really good wax um it's very forgiving if you make a mistake that's definitely the one thing i found so we are going to be definitely adding in everything here so this one is my apricot tea um i've actually found a lot of people love this uh, i've had lots and lots of people uh really really loving it which is nice isn't it so um, that does make me feel a little bit good that everybody is loving uh, what I'm doing at the moment so anyway like I said I am just going to add the last bit in here so let me just add this in so I need 32 and these bottles here if you can see it's got this spouty end isn't that perfect um, you know honestly so good and I do need to add a bit more wax because I, when I was talking, I thought, oh no, I need to add a bit more wax. So anyway, I will do that because I made a mistake when we were talking, um, but that's okay. And then I'm just going to mix it for a few minutes. So let me just add a bit more wax and then I'll come back. Now you can see here, I do actually have my beautiful jars here and I'm holding the tripod because it is not very nice to me. And in the background here, I do just have my wax. I'm going to just give it a little bit more of a stir. Generally, you can pour this around 55 degrees Celsius. I'm always talking Celsius because I'm in Australia. Um, and I didn't put any color in this because this is my apricot tea and I just thought, look, I could put an orange or a yellow, but you know, I didn't really want to have yellow looking wax. I actually did a little bit of a drop off the camera so anyway here we go we are starting again and don't these look beautiful I hope you can kind of see the pinky color now coming in it's starting to look nice it's solidifying and the thing too with this wax it does have shrinkage 100% Honestly, I've just learned to live with it. At the start, I hated it, but um, customers are saying to me, look, I really don't care. They really didn't seem to care. And I went to a few gift shops um, and some of those candles did have shrinkage. So I think it's more us as candle makers really start to panic about it, but seriously, we don't need to. So let's just go and do the right thing. I'm gonna put the candles on the scale so we will actually measure these ones, even though we don't really need to, but uh, just for um, to teach everyone good practice uh, let's just measure them up and get going so on my scale here I have my beautiful um, candle doesn't that don't they look lovely so you can see inside I've used the wick tools now just make sure you don't pull this bit too much if this um, wick is too tight what actually happens um, is it can actually cause those holes and the pulls at the top that's one thing I noticed um, so it's really good to try not to do that now it's at the right temperature let me just double check it again just to make sure Sure that we're doing it right it says 55 this one you're meant to pour a bit hotter but honestly it doesn't matter and I have noticed if you try and pour it around 50 to 55 you'll get less shrinkage um, and I did notice when I poured it too fast that's when I actually had a sinkhole and generally with this one you don't seem to get many of that uh, Jeff Stanley did a video on it and talked about how there's pretty much no shrinkage um, which is super good isn't it now this one is done I'm going to just take that one off and I have two of these um, and let me put that on because in a couple weeks time I do have um, the expo that I'm doing which is the drag expo and I have a beautiful smelling uh, gorgeous um, you know uh, what do we call it uh, stage or room you know oh gosh my brain is not here because it's late at night but you know what I mean you know I, I've got a beautiful um, 
stall that's what I'm thinking of see you know my brain is not here because I've just been too busy but this is my last thing for tonight and sometimes making candles I kind of feel really calm uh you know I feel like it's such a calming beautiful process I really love making candles honestly I do it's something I really find fun um, and when I first started doing it I thought our oh, candles are so easy but it's not a matter of doing that I have tested all of these wicks as well everybody I haven't just placed a wick in here I have tested these I'm actually using the ones from pure candle supplies these ones are number eights and they do fit these jars even though these jars are I think 7.5 across the eight is the perfect fit for them I did try um, 6.5s I tried sevens I've tried you know 65s so many different ones but these are the ones that seem to work the most um, when I do the vanilla one the vanilla one usually I need to go up because the vanilla seems to fight a little bit more to stay alight uh, so that's something I've done and if you watch my old videos you'll see that I used to use wood wicks honestly I love wood wicks I always use pro wicks and I got those from Aroma I love them but uh, most of my customers honestly they started asking for just cotton wicks they said look can we have them and I just thought look I just didn't want to do some wood wick some cotton I thought look I'm just going to change it all and in time my exciting news is these beautiful jars will actually have my logos and everything imprinted on them um, I am actually wait waiting for Lee Moulds they're actually going to do me a special one and I will do a video on that so in time uh, which is great because that's in Australia you'll be able to go over to Lee Moulds and they will do it but if you're looking for just these containers and the moulds uh, definitely go over there they're fantastic really easy to get them out of the mould uh, like I said I do use Hydrostone which I love this product it's such a beautiful product um, really easy to use it's very similar I guess to concrete all basically you just have your powder and mix water you don't need any sort of chemical to mix it um, whereas I did use jasmineite and that's a pain I really didn't like that very much I found it very annoying even though it was fun it was still annoying so I definitely love this product um, much better anyway I'm going to put these to the side now and let's come back in the morning and see how beautiful they are and I know you're going to agree with me that they're going to be beautiful my studio smells absolutely glorious so let's get going and we will come back tomorrow good morning everybody today I thought look let's undo these beautiful candles that we did yesterday and I do have my temperature here now as I talked about yesterday this particular m12 does have shrinkage issues I have not been able to fix that whether I pour it hotter cooler uh, it doesn't matter whether I warm up the jars I've tried everything it doesn't so I've just decided I'm going to live with it I mean um, but I have been told in summer you don't have these issues now if you have a look on here this is saying it's only 13 degrees Celsius so overnight so basically when I made them this would have been about 23 degrees I always keep this room when I'm in here around 23 degrees but then overnight that temperature has slowly dropped now even after I've noticed some of these totally solidifying the one other thing that I have noticed is then they're going to you know pull away from the side again so um I'm sort of I'm debating like do I keep this wax do I change to another one I love everything about the wax the only thing I don't like is the shrinkage um, and then even if you heat over the top later you st it's still going to shrink back so um, yeah really tricky uh, I do think a lot of it has to do with the temperature drop because as I said you know the temperature is going to drop and I actually think if you did um you know tin candles I reckon it would be worse because the tin would get colder than even um you know this sort of um cement base uh and I have tried it in a different few there's actually um one of them which is my rosy one it doesn't look as bad um but and the purple one I've noticed it's definitely more but the temperature was all the same um the te the purple one was actually uh poured within minutes after the other one so isn't that strange I really don't know why um, 
you know and it's not like a tiny gap sometimes it's quite quite a bit it pulls away quite a bit but anyway if look if i'm going to be honest if i was to buy a candle i wouldn't care if it smelt good looked good i would buy it that's all that would concern me and i have actually been into a few gift shops and notice um, a few candles pulling from the jar so uh, you know I don't know it's one of those things isn't it but I think if you were selling it to a shop they may not like that so I may have to um, go back to the drawing board and maybe look at another product which is very sad isn't it anyway let's put the camera down and I'll show you we will undo them so you can see exactly what I mean so now here are my beautiful jars. Let me just move that to the side. We'll undo one at a time. So basically this one here is my Barry's Daughter. You wouldn't have seen me do it because I did it after the other ones. So we're just going to lightly pull this. And obviously I'm going to cut this wick. But can you see that little separation around the outside? Um, you can definitely notice it for sure. I will cut off those wicks after. Um, this is the next one. Now this one around one edge isn't as bad. Um but around the other edge kind of is so um yeah so i'm not sure why but you know like and i actually i did do some i've tested um a couple of weeks back and what i actually did is started to heat up the jars do all that honestly there wasn't really no difference um this one is much worse if you can see so i may go over that one just to see if i can um, make it look a little bit more beautiful but um, as I said honestly if someone loves the jar they're going to buy it I mean look and once you actually light them then it sticks to the jar that's the one thing I've noticed now you can see on this edge this edge here is fine um, if you can see nice and close but the other edge you can see that gap um, so that's a bit of a bummer um, but I mean, I do like the scent throw. I do like the smooth tops are perfect. Um, honestly, if I was going to buy a candle and one had a smooth top, but pulled from the edge and one had a not so beautiful top, I would probably choose the smooth top because, um, it still looks beautiful. It's just that little gap. So, um, you know, but maybe you could even put some sort of disclaimer on why. And look at these jars. I mean, these are my new ones. Don't they look beautiful? So this is licorice rose and it just smells really lovely. It's my own sort of creation. Um, and then that's another jar. Oh, and I'll show you these ones. I really love this one. This is Magnolia. So this one is my Magnolia based one. It's This one's a quite a lighter one, but really pretty. And I did end up um, changing my style and putting colours on because um, I've noticed lots of people are buying the colourful things. And I thought, look, there's heaps and heaps of amazing creators that just do plain white. So now this was my plain white one. This is the Apricot Tea. Same thing. You can see it's pulled away. It didn't pull away from that edge, um, but pretty much every other edge it did um let me see this one the same thing this one's quite a lot on this edge i'm really not happy with that one so i may have to go over that and just hope for the best but anyway we'll see so but i just thought it's important that you all kind of see um you know why uh all all um, waxes are different aren't they so um that's my apricot tea one um, but I think these are going to do super good at my um, next expo. I know people are going to love them. I mean, how gorgeous is that? I mean, I would just choose that seriously just for the colour um, of the jar. And that's the thing. You know, if you have something different like a jar that's gorgeous or something like that, I really don't think people are going to care about the pulling away from the jar. You could even have a sign to say, um, you know, the wax will adhere to the jar once um, it's lit or, uh, you know, you could say it's something to do with, um, the temperatures anyway but I think from what I've read in summer you don't get that it's just winter so I may have to be good and try not to try another wax just in case but I definitely don't want a total soy wax or coconut soy because I've as much as I love them they just don't you know the colors um it goes yellow faster because it's totally natural it doesn't have anything so for me I definitely want some sort of tiny additive just to help it sit on the shelf a little longer anyway we are done for today I hope you have loved my gorgeous candles I'm so in love with them um, I will have to give one of my daughters some as well I do have some others on the other side in smaller jars too uh, but anyway that's it and then of course you can put your sticker on if you want I don't really want stickers on these but 
uh, they really need something don't they obviously they're going to have the warning on the bottom but here i have just getting some that are just tiny that are just going to sit at the top just to sort of say what they are um so i definitely will need to get some of those so i'll get on to creating those labels super soon but anyway like i said i hope you've enjoyed this video and i'll see you lovelies on the next one bye friends